Hi guys, welcome to a new tutorial. Before we begin this one, sorry I haven't um, been able to do any content for the last few days. I've been on holiday for the last week. I went away last Wednesday and I've just come back today. Uh, I literally came in like an hour and a half ago and I'm already recording for you guys. Yay, I haven't even taken off my shoes yet. That's dedication. Isn't that? No, it's not. <laughs> if I was that dedicated, I'd take my work on holiday, I hear you say. So in this video, we are going to be doing some um, split screen. We're going to show you. Well, I'm going to show you how to set up split screen uh, for multiple players on the same machine. Now I have two controllers here with me, so I can actually test this for two players. Um, I can make three and four players players spawn, um, but they're not going to be able to do anything uh, because I only have two controllers. So, what we're going to do is we're going to head into the level blueprint now. Uh, if, yeah, let's just say that the player one by default is going to consume the first controller and the keyboard and mouse. So everything that we do here assumes that you have more than one controller. Um, for consoles, you're obviously going to have more than one controller, so this is fine for that. But if you're deving for PC, um, just be aware that player one is going to take the first controller and the keyboard um, by default. So what we're doing here is event play, uh, event begin play, we're going to drag off and we're going to search for create player. And that's it guys, see you next time. No, <laughs> I won't see you next time. Uh, we'll press compile. Now this is negative one which means it's going to take the amount of controllers uh, and see which ones are being used and then it's going to place a new player inside the next available ID. Um, so I've got two controllers. We have one player currently in the game, so player one is on controller one. So it's going to say that controller two is currently available and it will assign this player to controller two. Now if I go in and I press play, you can see I've got two players here. I can move the first one with the, the first controller. I can move it with the keyboard and the mouse as well. See, the mouse is way more sensitive than the controller is. If I pick up the other controller real quick and I play with this one, now this one's got a bit of stick drift in it, which... There you go, you can see it's drifting. Um, stop drifting. It's broken. I had to get in touch with Microsoft so they could send me another one. It took a few days, but I think they were really good. Uh, but you can see, I can use both of these players now. Let's make them run in different directions. So you can tell that they're not assigned to the same controller. So there we go, I'm gonna make this one jump while this one's running. Oop, need to sneeze. Where is that mute button? Oh no. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so yes, we have both of those working. And if we full screen this, you can see that we have this nice split screen going on by default. So what if we don't want split screen? We can head into the event and the project settings. Event, edit, sorry, and then project settings. If we go to maps and modes, then you can see here we have local multiplayer and we have this use split screen. And we can actually tick this off. We can say, no, I don't want any split screen. If we press play, now we've got player one here, and we have player two over here. Now, the only camera that's been used is player one's camera, so player two is going to feel a little bit lonely over there. But you can see he's, uh, he's able to run around and jump around and still do all the stuff that that player two generally does. Just that annoys you and gets in the way because that's your little brother or your little sister who just really wants to play, and you you just don't really want to let them. But you have to because your parents. Were... Anyway, that, that's how it went for me. My sister was always tails when we played Sonic because you know annoying. Now, let's get rid of that. Uh, come on, there we go. So we can head back into the project settings and back into maps and modes. And we'll turn that back on. And you can actually change the layout as well. So you can change from horizontal to vertical. So if we press play now, we now have a vertical split screen. Which still works exactly the same. So let's full screen that. There we go. So you can see both players still get their camera and they get to move around freely and do whatever they want. So, uh, yay. So we'll close that down again. Now, if we go back into the project settings, I'm actually just going to stick this back onto horizontal for now. And then with three players split screen, you can decide which player will get the most screen. So we always had it uh, when we were younger because I have two sibling, uh, two siblings, two siblings. If I add another player to this and I compile this and press play, 
you can see that player one, which would always have been me, haha, gets the two halves on its own, whereas player two and player three have to share the split. Now you can actually favor who gets that, so you can go into the editor preferences, but my mistake, the project settings. I'm reading things as I'm clicking them rather than clicking them after I read them. And you can say three, three player split screen, favor the bottom, and we'll press play. And now you can see that player one and player two are the guys that end up sharing, and player three gets the full, uh, full size. So again, I'm just going to quickly head back into the project settings, and I'm going to go games and modes. I'm just going to revert that to favor the top. I'll close this down, and I'm going to go into the blueprints. And I'm going to open the level blueprint and create another create player. And now if I press compile and we head into here again, we now have four players. Now you'll notice that players two, three, and four are all stacking on top of each other. The reason they're doing that is because they're all using the same spawn point. Now, I can customize the spawn points. So let's see, uh, I have a, a spawn here already. So we have this one here. Uh, I've currently got it set to disabled to auto receive, but because this one's already in use, which is the initial player spawn, they're using this one on its own. If you have more than two players, so there we go, create this, you can go into the auto receive input. Player zero is actually player one, player one is actually player two, and so and so forth. So if we set this to player one, this is actually the second player of the game, and then this is player two, which is the third player of the game. Now, if we press play, you can see that player one's where he should be, and then all the others are still where where they shouldn't be. They're all with player two. Now, the reason they're all with player two um, is because there's only two controllers. So player three and player four are looking for an available controller and they're not finding one. So they're just tagging onto the exact same spawn location as player two. Um, if I had another controller to show you, I could move one of the other guys, but my other controllers are absolutely stuffed and I can't use them at all. Um, so I can show you this actively if we head into the level blueprint and we just get rid of the two. So we only have a second player spawning and I decide to get rid of this one. And move this up here. Or in fact, I'll, oh, bad size. If you get bad size, it means that you're, you're spawning in the floor. Or there's just not enough room for your player to spawn there. And we'll place this one over here now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable the one that's down on the floor. I'll press play, and you can see that player 2 has spawned up on the top. Now if I head back out and I take the one that's at the top and I disable this, and I actually put player 1, which is player 2, into the one on the floor, he now spawns in the floor. Yay! So you can see that they do work, but if you've got more players than you have controllers, the players are going to look for where the other controllers are spawning because they can't find their own controller's spawn point. Um, so yes, now the only other thing that we need to run through for this is inside of here. If you bring down this create, the little, the little arrow on the create player, you see we've got this building for, for uh, spawn porn. <laughs> If you have this disabled, then the second player will spawn the next time the map is refreshed. So the next uh, the next map that you load, there'll actually be two players or the previous amount of players plus the amount of players you want to spawn. Um, but if you tick yes, then it will spawn whenever it's supposed to be here. So let's, let's see if we can just uh, show that in in motion. So if we delay this for five seconds and we say, uh, print. Oh, hello. <laughs> print string. Let's say incoming. Incoming sibling. There you go. We'll compile that. Now we should be able to press play. We'll get a five second delay and then it should try and pop in another person. And it does. There we go. So yay, player two has entered the game. Huzzah. So there we have it. Um, now we can try and show you this as well. So let's, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave this deliberately unplugged. And we have the two different spawn points now. So if we head to the map that I created previously for the main menu tutorial, we go there, let's save that. 
and we head into here and we go into the widget that I previously created. You can see I've already set this up here. So right now, let's get rid of that. Compile, minimize it down, and we'll press play. So we have this little main menu, so it's got the widget thing that does what you need it to do. If you press play, it will take you to the map. And we've only got one player here. If we go into the widget and we say, when we press the play button, create player. Whoops. Have we froze? Almost. That was a close one. Create player. Now we'll set this to current controller ID minus one, and we'll say, nope, don't spawn yet. And what it should do, did I press compile? Oops. I did. If we press play and then we go into the play, we actually get two players spawn in here instead of one. So there we have it. You can start mixing these things together now, uh, have multiple players. You can have a widget, say like the main menu widget, where you select how many players that you want and then just use a boolean to decide how many controllers to, to spawn and, and so on. Um, I hope that's been a useful video for you guys. Um, it's been a fun one to put together. Yeah, I should have some more project updates for you guys later in the week, and obviously I'll keep working on some more tutorial content for you as well. So with that all said, I will see you guys next time.